Look at that. Ask and ye shall receive. Hi, everybody. I'm PJ Kwong, otherwise known as At Skating PJ. And we are thrilled to welcome you to this Rebound to Skating webinar, seminar, online, fabulous session that we are just going to get started with. Um, I want you to know that if you want to participate as far as any questions, uh, there is a question and answer function here in Zoom that we'd like you to use instead of the chat section. Um, so just to make mention of that. We're going to have uh, details about some prizes. We've got some great giveaways that are going to be happening. Uh, but first, Executive Director Lisa Alexander, I'm going to ask you to open things up and to just let us know what's going on. Thanks, PJ. I'm so excited to be here today. And I feel like I'm the, I'm the least exciting person who's <laughs> going to be on today's webinar. Um, but I really want to be here to kick off and celebrate the start of the skating season. And let me tell you how great it feels to be saying that, you know, after people's Ooh. patience, the challenges, the stress of getting going, to be here on a good news webinar, talking about the excitement of being back, talking about some new tools, just could not be more excited. Um, as you know, we still can't all get together in person. So we're, you know, here we are in a virtual format. And, you know, this gives us the opportunity to talk skating. And it also gives us the opportunity to thank the Ontario Trillium Foundation and their funding partners, the uh, Government of Ontario. I think that most of you clubs have seen our Rebound to Skating program and a lot of things, you know, branded under this Rebound to Skating program. And that's been made possible in large part because of some funding that we have received from the Resilient Communities Grant. And I really want to thank the team at Skate Ontario that worked on that. That is a big deal, working through those things and getting those resources. So just super excited to be able to share those with all of you and for all of our member clubs and skating schools um, to be able to have the benefit. And really all that funding is going to be targeted at adapting programs, reimagining programs, uh, making sure that everybody, you know, as always, we have the best learn to skating program, learn to skate programs with our can skate program. Uh, but this really gives us the opportunity to uh, make sure that we're doing them again consistently so that people know when you are in a can skate program that you're absolutely getting the best in every one of our clubs and that they are um, that they're done in a way that's safe with COVID protocols so that people can feel confident putting their skaters in there and also just trying to make it easy for the clubs. We know you all have enough to worry about, right? Like, yeah, this is- Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so you know, like, Worrying about registration, worrying about what's going on with your facility, worrying about, you know, all the added protocols is just an absolutely, I, I'm so thankful for the incredible people that we have all across this province who, through all of that, are working on this return to skating. So we've got a number of tools and you know what we have going on so far is we have a Skate Ontario Rebound to Skating Playbook. And again, the intention here is just make it easy, give you ideas, make it easy. So this is a resource book um, helping people to come back from COVID-19 as safely as possible. Every one of our skating clubs and schools was sent an actual physical copy of that book. And all of those resources are also available online. Okay. We have also sent club and skating school uh, skating toolkits. And let me tell you, our office uh, looked like some kind of crazy warehouse for a while there. People think those kits came all organized and just got sent out to you. That was not the case. I think there's still piles of boxes and pylons in there. So again, you know, thank you to the team for organizing and sending all of those resources out. We have our Rebound to Skating webinar series. So a whole yep. bunch of amazing presenters and topics. And for people who couldn't attend those, 
they're able to see those at any time. They are available on our website. You can watch all 11 webinars there, 11 webinars. You know, so you can imagine, you know, all the incredible presenters there and the range of topics. Yep. And we also have some new video marketing material. And for people who haven't seen it, you know, this is all about how we've adapted Canscape program to make it, to make it safe, remind people how fun it is, and to encourage people, uh, encourage people to get back in. And the other thing that uh, I think is great about that video program is we've also been able to have an incentive program for our clubs and skating schools. So you can look on our website for information about that, but basically just by reposting that video, it's the opportunity for your club or school to earn a thousand dollars, just straight cash to help with your programs just by showing the video. Yeah. And uh, still have even more upcoming. We'll be working on these resources all the way through until April. You'll see more uh, organization and resources on the website. So I'm going to say, uh, stay tuned for, you know, stay tuned for even more stuff. And Lisa, we got to let people know, it's a bit of a sneak peek, but we are going to uh, show that Canscape video here a little bit later on our webinar. So yeah. stay tuned for that, along with all the other surprises. Yes, yes. So exciting to see something updated. And, you know, it's got our own, uh, of course, our own Ontario skaters and coaches feature in it. So very excited with that. We're very excited with that. Indeed. And and the fact that there are all these resources, as you mentioned, on our website to be able to go and screen um, at your convenience the 11 um, uh, webinars dedicated towards rebound to skating that exist. I mean, that's something that's pretty remarkable. We're just, you know, we get a lot of people asking for ideas and for best practices. So that's the idea. You know, we just want as much as possible sure. to support in every way that we can and to share all those great ideas, you know, uh, what we want to say, you with pride, right? Although, you know, wow. there's all those great ideas. You know what? We all love skating. Those yeah. of us that are here on this webinar, myself included, I mean, it's been my home for a very long time. Um, yeah. So, Lisa, before you run away, how about just a couple of words about um, uh, getting to this point and what that means to you? Oh, it is. I think like lots of people, this is, I think, still very stressful and very yeah. challenging. Yeah. But wow, am I happy to be dealing with stressful and challenging stuff that's about coming back to skating. Yeah. You know, and, and honestly, it is so exciting for me to actually see skaters on the ice, to see friends again, and to see what people are willing to do to support this awesome sport. It is just my privilege to work with all of these people it's like my just my privilege to see all of them out there see the big smiles it's very exciting i agree you know what else is exciting just before you leave can i tell you about the prizes that we have available to yeah. our audience today all right i'm going to pick up my notes because honestly i get it messed up all right first of all we have five individual um five individual uh, prize packs. They include a backpack, toiletry bag, face mask, water bottle, and toque, and they're all branded with re rebound to skating. So those are individual um, prize packs. We're going to be playing Kahoot, which is our favorite yeah, a trivia game. That's going to be at the end of the session for the top five winners of uh, the Kahoot game, you're gonna be the ones who are gonna get those top five individual prize packs. I wanna make sure that as you're registering for Kahoot, that you know um, to put in the same name you have as the one that you have here on Zoom so that we can actually find you and make sure that we send the stuff to you. The other thing is, and this is super exciting, I don't know if you know this, Lisa, we have five club packs prizes that are available and those are going to go to five clubs they are going to have to um register on a, a survey monkey link that we're going to put out and that is skates and helmets for your your wee skaters that um are coming to your club so five individual packs five club packs i don't know how much fun 
um, that skating still is. I mean, so for this part to be able to have some little bit of swag, I love it. Okay, we are going to go right now to our CanSkate video ad that you talked about, Lisa. And that ad um, is something that was um, already shared via um, um, a newsletter that went out to all clubs. There's a link embedded in that newsletter where you can access the video for yourself and then you can share it, please. Um, the clubs can share it, people can share it, anybody can share it because uh, we want to get the word out that um, um, skating is where you want to be. That's the sport, people. Um, and can skate is the way to learn about it. So um, my friend, in the background, my background producer is going to share the screen and we're hopefully going to be able to get a chance to see the Canscape video. And I think you're going to be impressed by it. Skating is a part of being Canadian and Canscape is back. Canscape is the go-to program for skaters of any age and any skill level, offering engaging sessions with qualified coaches. Our Can Skate Excellence program recognizes clubs and skating schools who meet and exceed program delivery standards. A lot has changed since the last time we saw you, but don't worry, we're ready and better than ever. Let's get skating today. Okay, doesn't that look like fun? Yeah, it does. I love it. Yeah. So you know what, Lisa? I know that I keep dragging you, and I know that you're probably trying to sneak backwards away from the camera. And I know you got lots of stuff to do, but you know, there's something else that I want to talk to you about, and that is our high-performance athletes. I don't know if you've heard. There's an Olympic Games coming up in about four months' time. Did you know? No, yeah. yes. <laughs> no. And there is no doubt in my mind that Skate Ontario is going to be well represented at the Beijing 2022 Games. Yeah. So um, I think that um, we, we have every reason to be proud of what our athletes have done and are doing. And you know what? Um, my backstage producer, again, was in contact with uh, a number of our athletes to see if they would be willing to send us a little bit of a sneak peek about kind of either their programs or what they're doing or how they're training. And so we we heard back from some names and faces that you'll probably recognize, but I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag just yet. So um, do you have any hopes for the high performance athletes this year? Um, I can say, like, you know, maybe some medals, certainly just some stunning performances that we can no all doubt. be proud of. And yep. I just know what inspiring, awesome people they are. Yeah, you no know, doubt. When, yeah, when you, you know, you've seen, you know, like all of their help, the engagement that they've had in doing seminars, you know, for talking to our other younger skaters over the last, like that tells you what kind of people they are. So yeah, exactly. you see their amazing skating by amazing people. I just could not be more excited that we get to go to the Olympics, see them at the Olympics so soon. Well, not only that, but they um, will be going to the national championships first, which also happened to be where? In Ontario. Yes, looking forward to that in Ottawa. Yes. So that's often where we get a hint of who might be going to the Olympic Games. It's um, as Skate Canada says, it's not the only um, it's not the only thing um, that is that determines who makes the team, but it sure makes for some exciting watching. I mean, yeah. really. So if yeah. we want to, and you and I will maybe chit chat about this afterwards, but let's take a quick look at our high performance athletes, a bit of a sneak peek, and thank you to the athletes for playing along. It's going to take a second. There we go. Hey everyone, it's Gabrielle Dalen. Just wanted to say welcome back on the ice. I love skating in Ontario. I've been skating here my whole life. It's so great. There's so many wonderful coaches, rinks, and it's just absolutely beautiful. I hope you guys have a great time back. And to get you excited and motivated, here's a sneak peek of one of my new programs.
Hi everyone, I'm Roman Sadovsky and I'm going to show you my second half of my show program. Oh, I need you to know You keep me from falling in Oh, don't let me go Oh, sometimes it feels like we're shipwrecked Lost in the water Where you going on? Yeah. 
Hey, Skate Ontario, it's Piper Gillis of Paul Poirier. Here's a sneak peek at our Olympic training. Lisa, what did you think about that? I'm getting, I'm, makes me a little emotional. People. A little verklempt. A little verklempt. I'm a little verklempt. I feel so, uh, I feel so lucky to see that and how wonderful of them to, for all of us to be able to get to see that little piece. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, we had a look <clears throat> at Gabby Daleman, at Evelyn Walsh and Trent Michaud, at Maddie Skeezus, at Roman Sadowski, and at Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier. Okay, quick little note. Maybe not everybody knows this, but because of Roman Sadowski's efforts, uh, we were able to secure another spot uh, for the Olympic Games for the men. So thank you, Roman, and Skate Ontario is super proud of you. That's right. We sure are. We sure are. Um, I think that, uh, you know, what this all starts with is at uh, the clubs. So when we're talking about the clubs and of course, rebound to skating is all about getting the kids back on the ice and about, um, you know, as safe as we can be all of the, all of the different moving pieces that have been so fluid, you know what I mean? Um, so um, when you think about it, what do you think the clubs mean to the skaters? Oh, I, I feel like, but I feel like the clubs are like their heart. You yeah, know, I agree. Have, you, you have a, you have a home there. You have a home there. And for everybody who's involved in those clubs, the friends you make, those are real friends in your life, a place to go, to yep. feel supported, to build your skills. I think that the clubs are all of that. You know, it's interesting. Um, you and I, uh, we come from different sports, but, you know, skating is now your home heart. We know that. Yeah. But I still have friends um, that I have known since childhood, since my first days at the rink. Um, and I'm sure that for everybody here, their, their um, ideas about what it means to be um, involved in sport is exactly, exactly that. Any comments about that? Uh, I guess, like you, I feel lucky. You know, I, I grew up in an artistic sport, different sport, you know, Instagram yeah. swimming. And, and, you know, some of my very best friends are, are people, are still, some of them are people that I met when I was seven. <laughs> From seven. my club. <laughs> yeah. You know what, it was only 20 years ago. It's no biggie. Exactly, yeah. 
<laughs> so you, you know what? Uh, since we're talking about clubs, what I want to do is I want to turn our attention to um, our, our, our club's program manager, Sharon Mackey, who was able to uh, con <clears throat> convince representatives from three different clubs in Ontario to talk about safety and adapting through COVID. Um, and so the reps from the three clubs, there you are, Sharon. It's so great to see you. Thank you so much for putting this all together. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So are you ready to go with your representatives? For sure, as long as they're all here. I think they are. Um, so everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Sharon, take it away. And uh, Lisa and I are gonna retreat to the background. That's awesome. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, the past 18 months has been tough on our skating community. We know that. Um, you know that. Uh, it's especially been felt in our clubs. Uh, we've had the opportunity to see um, clubs step up to the plate and adapt to all the continuous changes um, and really see growth in their community. On top of all that, just with for the love of sport and especially skating. Um, so we're fortunate today to have three club leaders from across the province join us. Uh, we have Pat, Debo Pat Tebokerst from Kitchener Waterloo Skating Club and she's joining us from, uh, or, or she is the technical director at Kitchener Waterloo. Uh, wave Pat. <laughs> awesome. We also have Pina Gilmore. She's coming from the east side of the province and she is part of a newly formed skating club called Skate Seaway. And uh, she is the director and uh, one of the coaches at that club. <laughs> awesome. And we also have Shannon Williams. She is the president from the Woodville Skating Club. And this is a small club uh, just east of Lake Simcoe. Okay, perfect. So let's start off with you, Pat. Um, there's been big adjustments to make this season uh, between protocols and cleaning and skater restrictions. Uh, we've all determined that the relationship with our facility has become more and more important. Um, can you share your experiences working with your facility? Yeah, hi, Sharon. Hi, guys. Um, we've had quite the time as uh, most of our country has. And uh, being in Kitchener-Waterloo, um, we've been lucky to have uh, our, our municipalities, our um, uh, facility managers working really strongly with um, our team, our executive director and myself. We have been lucky that they have put forth all of the protocols that line up with Skate Ontario. Um, because they are two different cities within our um, uh, region, Kitchener and Waterloo have been um, somewhat different in their approach to the time in between uh, sessions and what have you, but we've been able to manage to uh, set our schedules accordingly. And uh, of course, all of our coaches and staff have been um, in line with all of us as well, working hard to make sure that um, we can bring everybody back safely. And we've been able to do that um, really well. So we're, we're happy and so happy to be back on the ice. That's really great. That's really great. So for you, Pina, you're a coach, um, but you're a coach of a newly established school. Um, your, there was extra importance for you to have start a relationship with your municipality. How did that go? And do you think that the future of that relationship will be in a good place? Uh, our community actually lost our skating, our learn to skate program uh, back at the start of the pandemic. So our municipality was uh, looking for uh, somebody to step forward and uh, run learn to skate programming in our area. And um, they were thrilled when a, a small group of volunteers came forward and said, hey, we're willing to, to give it a go. So uh, here we are. Uh, they were looking for programming that was uh, inclusive of all ice sports and not just um, hockey, because uh, we are a hockey community. Uh, so here we were, and uh, we were offering can skate, which was perfect. It fit in perfectly with, uh, with their goals. Um, they have been very supportive uh, since the get-go. Uh, they've <laughs> offered us um, a minor sport rate to uh, make skating more affordable for families in our community. Um, and um, when this whole uh, proof of vaccination hit uh, rate 
uh, like at the 11th hour before our programming was going to start, uh, they were right there to support us, um, to offer us that um, support of um, just, you know, clearing everybody at the doors. And by the time uh, our skaters arrive to our, our rink pad, they're ready to go. They just need one last check-in and uh, for contact tracing purposes, and they're all set to go. So they've been very supportive. Communication has been great. Um, I, can't, I can't say enough good things about uh, the relationship that we've had with the facility. That's really great. What a great place to start with that solid foundation of a relationship with the facility. I love it. I love it. Here at Skate Ontario, we've been um, able to strengthen our relationships with stakeholders, so our clubs and schools uh, during the pandemic. It's been awesome. Uh, the use of virtual platforms has definitely helped that um, as it's been able to shrink this really big province into something where we can actually reach um, all areas geographically in the province and even the little clubs and the big clubs and that kind of thing. Um, it's been a really great experience to kind of be there to open up the lines of communications and create those new relationships. Um, Pat, for you, how has virtual platforms uh, changed your day-to-day -day operations in your club? Well, that's a good point. Um, we've we've got a massive um, staff of of coaches, and um, of course, um, keeping them um, connected with their skaters and can, keeping them connected with the sport of skating. Um, they have used that platform um, ongoing, and um, I've been able to tap into things like coaches' meetings. Um, you know, they were always fairly well attended, but I honestly can say that they have been 100% attended because of Ooh. the virtual, um, the virtual meetings that we hold. And not only that, um, I've been able to set up parent meetings um, for our new up and coming um, kids out of Cansgate moving into Group Star and moving beyond into the Star One Two. We don't always have the time to be able to explain how our sport works and going through the LTD with parents. Um, I've also been invited to sit in on coach parent meetings over the summer and many of them uh, in the evenings where you know we've been able to sit down and go over what would be normal coming back to our, our uh, September fall season and how we would like to see the skaters move into the different uh, sessions. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more about how we have been formatting our sessions, but um, just giving them an idea of where they best fit into our new getting back to normal sessions. Getting back to normal, that really is the theme, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I love that. I love that uh, you're able to essentially expand your reach with your community just by having those meetings and sitting in and that type of thing. That's yes. really great, Pat. Um, Pina, so your skaters had access to new opportunities because of virtual uh, platforms. Can you expand on that? Oh, you're just on mute, Pina. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, when the when the pandemic first hit, we at first thought it was just an extended March break, and um, it was an opportunity to take a break from school and the ice. Um, but then it started to go down um, a very uh, dark. It was starting to go into a dark place. So, uh, with platforms available to connect with the kids. Um, it was a nice opportunity as a coach to just connect with my students to see where they were where they were at. Uh, we used the opportunity more as a self reflection opportunity. So you know we're missing the ice, we're missing our skating. But what is it about the ice and skating that we miss? And you know when it was friends, then we found opportunities to connect with our skating friends, and uh, we did little exercises and activities. Um, to, uh, to show that even though we were isolated, when we brought our work together, uh, we were connected and we were together and we were able to share that with our, with our peers. Um, if they were worried about their progress, then we found opportunities to use that as an off-ice training experience. For our little ones, we knew that 
going back to the rink might look a little different. So we took that opportunity to teach them how to lace up their own skates um, and to get themselves ready, how to pack their skate bag. Um, how would that look if they were heading off to a competition or, a, or an assessment day? So we, we did that. And then we just did some fun, silly stuff like, you know, draw your favorite jump and turn it into a character. So that was a little fun exercise and experience. So I hope you, you know, just finding ways to just connect and to stay healthy uh, mentally. It was good for them. I know it was good for me. So, um, you know, moving ahead, um, I think it's still a resource that I'd like to continue using with my students just because there's never enough time at the rink to do those things. So this is a great opportunity to connect with families, to connect with our skaters, and to use that time away from expensive ice to, to, to use that time uh, to grow as a person, to set our goals, to grow. And that's I love it. The uh, opportunity to continue is phenomenal. We, um, we sometimes talk about the changes we did last season, but so many of them will continue. We've learned so much. Um, and that's certainly a really good point about how you've talked about how it's something that you can continue that will help your skaters move along with their development. I absolutely love it. So virtual pathrooms, uh, excuse me, pathways um, have different options and a lot of it's surrounded by communication. Um, Shannon, I haven't forgot about you. Uh, we, uh, for yourself, you guys have changed or increased uh, the amount of communication you've done because of um, the last year. Can you expand upon that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it has made us be more in contact with uh, not only each other within the, the skating club, but also with our members because you, have to let the families know what's going on. The changes were so fast and so often, I feel, last year. You just, you had to keep in constant contact with your families to let them know what new protocols were and what was expected of their kids at the rink and so on and so forth. So that was really great um, because it, it, it made us do that, right? It, it's uh, different when it's the regular season and you're just like, well, I'll, I'll catch that person at the rink on Tuesday night. You couldn't do that anymore. So we had to, um, we just had to make the best of what it was. Um, and it, it was great because it also made us realize how important the social media aspect of, of your club is. It's easy to forget about it um, because the club just kind of takes care of itself in a normal busy season. But the last two years hasn't been able to do that. So, so that's been wonderful. Um, it's made us keep more up to date with our social media as well, which is, uh, which is always a bonus. Yeah, it's awesome. You can uh, go visit club sites and some of them are full on current and up to date. And other times you go and you're like, oh, we may have forgotten. So if we want them to keep coming back, we should probably make sure that we keep it uh, current. Um, I absolutely agree. And it's one of those things that goes first, right? Because we take care of the skaters and on the ice first. So I agree with that. That's awesome. So keep in touch with our members and ensuring that they have the information um, also helps instill really solid relationships um, because we can show the communication goes both ways. Uh, it's great. So we mentioned the word adaptability multiple times today. Uh, it's certainly been the name of the game for the last 18 months. Uh, we've all made changes in our personal day-to-day -day, uh, lives as well as the way we operate clubs and schools. Um, let's highlight some of the stuff that we did and how we adapted last season. So Pina, I'm going to start with you. Um, can you share impactful changes that you made in your area? Um, so for our um, cleaning supplies and uh, cleaning protocols for our CanScape program, I have to say, probably before pandemic, I was probably the level five germaphobe and, you know, was always doing the cleaning of the clean, the supplies, but uh, we do it more often now uh, that the municipality has given us a storage area for our supplies. So after each session, we can uh, do a nice cleanup of those supplies and make sure that they dry properly uh, before we throw them back into their bins and use them for our next use. So that's wonderful. Um, not a bad idea from time to time too, to bring them home, give them a bath, a nice bath. Um, and so that they're ready to go. Um, and smaller group sizes, we've done that too. So 
I like that idea of the smaller groups. It just gives everybody a little more space. Um, it's not as intimidating for the little ones to be on the ice with the you know kids moving fast around them. It can be scary. So now the small group sizes gives them that comfort. And for the older kids, having less kids on the ice just gives them more room to do the things that they need to do. So I think those changes have been positive changes for us. Um, with this new way of operating. Yeah, I love it. We, uh, I, I love, I love the teaching aid bath. <laughs> We're just going to take these teach aids home, draw them a nice warm bath. <laughs> That's <laughs> phenomenal. Um, and the small group sizes is huge. We've actually received a ton of feedback from various clubs talking about the, how the small group sizes were a challenge at first, but then they became to they be, or they came to a place where they really learned to adapt and enjoy them. Um, so that's nice that some clubs will definitely continue with that. Uh, that's yeah. good. Okay, so Pat, I'm gonna move over to you. So your club um, made changes in the way your sessions were scheduled, um, which is a big deal. <laughs> Talk to me. Yeah, we, um, we had, um, um, as you know, we have uh, 18 hours of ice a day um, in our club. We, we run um, seven days a week. So um, in order for us to be able to uh, make sure that coaches weren't uh, there one hour and waiting another hour, I, um, I grouped my sessions according to the coaches so that the coaches could get their work done with the number of skaters they had. Uh, of course, we had to spread that out over the course of the entire day. And it made it uh, a little easier for coaches to be able to do their job, go home and not have to hang out for hours and hours on end. Um, it also gave them an opportunity to uh, connect with their skaters. Uh, many of them were feeling, um, you know, that anxiety about whether or not um, this was going to go on forever. So they came back together as little groups of, of friends and uh, they were able to uh, um, train and do what they do uh, in a real intimate session. And now it's brought to, and at all levels. So, you know, sometimes we get a little bit greedy with our, the way we do things. Well, I now know in running this club that all levels of skaters can function together and sometimes the um, um, the smaller kids on the ice with the better kids on the ice learn a lot quicker and um, the older ones can adapt a little bit more and help those uh, smaller skaters achieve some of their goals so it's been it's been quite a wonderful um, pathway for for us and we've been able to maneuver that we have kind of gone back to somewhat normal now but um we we are all marrying together quite nicely at kw i must say and i'll <laughs> say this for you pina my, our toy storage room has been cut in half because of all of the cloth toys we got to throw out after all these years so mm -hmm. uh we can finally move yeah but yeah. we will give ours a bath too <laughs> Well, I, 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 I do oh, want to say thank you to Skate Ontario for those resources and yeah. the Ontario Trillium Fund because, I mean, that's been wonderful. That's been most helpful. That's awesome. We um, were talking about those old teaching aids. It's funny because it's probably a good thing that we are throwing out some of those older ones. Um, we can move on to some newer, um, cleaner uh, ways to support the kids for sure. Awesome. Okay, so when talking um, about what you just said, uh, Pat, um, it's cool that you now have another way to organize your sessions in your back pocket. Um, that organizing sessions in a different way is sometimes something that's challenging for us because we've done it the same way for so many years. So it's so cool to hear that not only did you do it because you needed to, uh, it worked really, really well. So that is really, really great to hear. Um, okay, so Shannon, uh, you guys uh, had got to offer some new opportunities um with your sessions uh, can you can you talk about that a little bit yeah so um we got an amazing head coach and she was wonderful and decided that she was going to do our off ice sessions uh by zoom so it kept the girls engaged because you're always worried 
um, you know, that they're going to lose interest in the times that you're not on the ice and you don't want them to lose their skills that they've worked so hard um, to achieve. So, uh, so yeah, so Denise ran the off ice uh, Zoom and she did it um, the whole time that we weren't on the ice. So it was really great a way for the girls to keep their abilities up and also to keep them interested uh, to want to come back on the ice and be really excited when we were when we were able to. Is that something you think you'll continue with or do you think that was a one time thing and it's over? Um, it's definitely being discussed. Um, so we're, we're hoping so, but you never know what will happen. So that's awesome. I love it. We um, so that kind of leads us into programs. Um, as many of you know or may have experienced, um, many clubs struggled with membership numbers last year, uh, engagement levels, uh, financials, all of the things that come along with that. Um, this was easily expected with the restrictions and protocols and just the climate that was going on. Um, what's crazy is there's actually clubs that experienced increases in membership and increases in program size through the season. Um, and most of that came by adapting their sessions or uh, offering a wider range of programming. So our people here today have some really good insights on things they did. Um, so Pat, I'm gonna start with you and you had some changes in your program registration. Can you talk about your adult program? Yeah, our adult program over the course of, um, oh, I would say the last couple of years, but specifically moving into COVID um, and moving somewhat out of COVID, our adult program um, has really increased. We have um, embraced our adults. Um, they come out of many of the programs. Number one, the Parent and Taught program, um, our Canscape adult program um, that is immersed inside of our Canscape program um, has grown um, <clears throat> into two day packages for them. Um, some are flexible with their work over COVID having been at home and then they access our, our day ice with private lessons. Um, we have now got enough adults in our group star program. So we combine our skaters, our young group star program out of Canscape and our adult group star on one session. And because our numbers are limited this fall, um, we've been able to add another adult program onto our group star, which will be a Canscape adult. So all three in one um, and um, those adults turn into great volunteers we have them on committees for um, fundraising for uh, welcome tables at our canscape sessions so um, they are the ones that um, really appreciate our sport and want to be recognized as as part of skate canada so, um, you know, our social media, we, we kudos to them on their achievements. They're competing at some levels, hopefully back this year. Um, but um, we're, we're really proud of, of the numbers that we've been able to hold on to and continue to grow with. That's amazing. I uh, love hearing that you're even uh, getting adults coming out of your parent and top program. That's yeah. uh, almost an unexpected perk. Uh, from changing operations during the pandemic. That's really, yeah. really great. Well, some of the parents are uh, a little embarrassed when they come on to these sessions that, you know, their skills should be a little bit better than their, than their children. So I don't know if it's more of a competition thing or, <laughs> or what, but uh, we'll take it. Good for them. I absolutely love that. Um, Shannon, in Woodville, you guys had um, amazing success this past season. Um, I'd like to share that. <laughs> so I'd love to hear more. Yeah, so uh, like many clubs across Canada, you are faced with all of a sudden, you know, are we going to have to shut down because we're only allowed 10 on the ice, 20 on the ice with coaches included and you kind of have to really rejig how you are thinking about your programs. So um, we traditionally had not run the parent and top program that had always been something run by the municipality and we couldn't run pre-can last year. So we did the parent and taught instead. 
Um, so that was amazing. It was such a great way for uh, the kids to kind of get a little bit more individual attention. Um, and uh, also, sorry, I've got <laughs> somebody interrupting me here. Um, we uh, ran Can Power last year, which was just amazing. It, it blew the doors off of anything that we could have expected. Um, so that that certainly increased our registration numbers, which was amazing. And um, just looking at our notes here from our talk the other day, um, uh, we had more adults skate last year also, which was really surprising for us. But um, yeah, so it was it really was really kind of neat to see uh, the re reorganization of our programs and some new things come come into effect that we hadn't had to do before. Yeah, and I think the reorganization for you guys is really key here. Um, the one thing you noted in our conversation was that um, your registration actually increased last year compared to previous years um, without yeah. being able to offer your pre can skate and lower can skate levels. Um, and what program was the big one for you for that? Like what was the, what made up the most numbers? Um, our our can power made up the most numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really, really great. It's really, really great to hear. Um, it's a really good example of how um, we need to continue to ensure that we're offering the right programs for our community at the right time. Right. We, uh, we, we have, we've have offered the same program sometimes for years and years and years, but it may not be the programs that our community needs right now. So that's yeah, a great. Yeah, I absolutely love that. That's awesome. Okay. So before we close our segment, um, let's, that was a huge positive. Um, let's uh, finish with a couple more positives. Um, so Pat, what do you think? Um, you shared some really cool stuff already. Um, do you have anything else to add about positive from last year? Well, we taught our skaters how to knit. Um, last Christmas, we had a knit with challenge with, um, with a network of callers that we, we uh, engaged in over COVID. Um, at the very beginning, our executive director reached out to uh, six clubs and uh, every second week we met with them just to compare notes and uh, to see how everyone was doing in Ottawa, Barrie, Hamilton, Oakville, you know, we were all linked together. So I put out a knitwit challenge to our skaters uh, for parents to teach their kids how to knit. And we made a big blanket and we donated it to the home shelter, the homeless shelter in uh, KW. So that's one thing. Um, our coaches became a big cohesive group. Um, they were all so excited to get back to the rink. Um, everyone uh, pulled together. Um, they came to the rink when I needed them to come and learn about uh, new protocols that were happening ongoing. Um, and of course, everybody very nervous and, and uh, wanting to know that uh, uh, we were keeping the community safe because one shutdown could mean that four of the rinks in this building would also shut down. So um, I think that we, out of all of this, we're so thankful to be back. We're so thankful that we had the guidance from Skate Ontario um, to ensure that what we were doing was um, was right. And um, just we're just so happy to be working and to have our doors open and to to see I'm at work right now and I, I see all the can skaters back and the parents back and and everybody just with smiles on their faces and hopefully, you know, we'll convince everybody that uh, this was a dream or a nightmare. And uh, we're back to uh, back to business. But thank you, Skate Ontario, for everything that you've done. It uh, has been a godsend for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Um, it's hard to talk after that, Pina. Uh, we, uh, we really love that um, everybody's back on the ice. Being able to see skaters um, and their coaches back to work um, right now is so, so, so good. Um, Pina, for you as a coach, um, what are your takeaways from the year? I think the biggest positive that I've noticed is the fact that we get to showcase to everyone how wonderful this sport is and and how 
much we learn. We're not just there to learn skating skills. We're there to uh, learn life skills. And it's just been wonderful to show that we are a disciplined bunch. Uh, we live by rules in figure skating and, and skating. And um, our kids are learning that from a very young age, uh, following circuits, following signs. Uh, so getting used to pandemic rules was not a far stretch for our skaters or our families. And um, it's, it's really nice to see our young skaters leaving the facility and actually thanking the Zamboni driver and thanking the security guard and thanking the front desk clerk. It's just wonderful. They're, they're grateful to be back. They're grateful to be somewhere where they feel like they belong. And for some, this is their only opportunity to get out. So, you know, it's wonderful. It's just nice to see that they're just nice people. We're, we're, we're nurturing nice people and they're not just there to learn how to skate, but they're there to learn life skills and to be responsible. And, and it's just, I'm proud of our sport for that. Oh, that's amazing. It sounds like you're doing a great job, Fina. <laughs> Uh, producing Fine. young people to uh, be respectful is, is a really big deal in any uh, walk yeah. of life. And sport is really a good place for that. Um, we have definitely have proven that in the past. And it's so great to hear that um, this year has accentuated that for sure. Um, what about you, Shannon? What have you got? Um, we, um, sorry. <laughs> Last year was, a, it was a challenging for everybody, but um, it, it, it um, provided an opportunity for the skaters to learn skills that maybe they would not have learned um, in a normal, normal year, like tying their skates, because we weren't allowed spectators on and off throughout the year. And so they needed to know how to tie their skates if they didn't want to, you know, get ready in the parking lot in the middle of December and walk across the icy parking lot with their ski guards. <laughs> so that was a great thing for them to learn. Um, and uh, it, it helped them to be more focused and self-regulate a little bit better, uh, better because of all the protocols that we did need to follow and uh, be more orderly and uh, re just respect the rules that the facilities had put in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because it's real when you talk about things like tying your skates um, and the skaters being able to uh, gain that responsibility and independence on their own, um, maybe earlier than they may have in the past uh, is really, mm -hmm. really good. I love it. Well, thank you, ladies. Um, this is the end of our segment, but we'll just check to see if there's any questions that have come in see in here does anybody have any questions for our panel pj's back i was always here i was listening to everything <laughs> what great information oh honestly <laughs> i don't see anything in there so with that i'm going to thank you pat and thank you pina and thank you shannon um we very sincerely appreciate you taking the time to share your experience with us um it's been a great pleasure working with you and all the clubs across the province um, during this crazy, crazy time. Um, I really feel our relationships have strengthened and there's uh, bigger bonds than there ever were. Um, and I do believe our skating community will come back stronger. Sharon, I like the way you think and um, <laughs> you're right. Skate Ontario thanks Pina Gilmore, Pat DeBokerst and Shannon Williams. Your information and sharing the questions that you asked in order to be able to elicit the information were just fantastic. I can't think of a club um, or even a skating parent or even a skater out there that wouldn't have benefited from this information. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we are super lucky in figure skating to have the kind of community that we have because honestly, these relationships, um, they, they start out as a parent just arriving at a club and next thing you know, the parent is volunteering and is on the board and then, you know, they develop these lifelong relationships with their coaches. I mean, I'm still in touch with, with, with kids that I coached back in the 80s. Oh my goodness, that's a long time ago. Anyway, but it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful to think about this. But you know what else is wonderful to think about? Prizes. So we mentioned earlier off the top that we were going to have five individual prize packs. 
to the winners of our Kahoot Trivia Contest, which is coming up at the end of the session in just, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, but the other set of prizes, another five prize packs, this time for clubs, um, that they include helmets and skates, which what club couldn't use that, especially as you're trying to uh, entice children back onto the ice and maybe they don't know if they want skating so they can at least try it a little bit. So what you need to know is our secret word. Our secret word is rebound. And in the chat, you will see a link. Um, uh, you will see a link that is the Club School Secret Word Contest. It's to Survey Monkey. It's in the chat. You click on that link. You put in our secret word, which is once again, rebound, as in rebound to skating. And then you'll be entered in our draw. Um, uh, you have until sort of tomorrow afternoon to enter the contest. And again, it's five prizes uh, that will be going out um, to five different clubs across the province that include helmets and skates. So um, you're going to want to do that, that's for sure. So before we're going to get to Kahoot, we've got a wonderful surprise for you. And that is, we had a chance to talk to um, Patrick Chan, um, the, the most decorated men's figure skater in Canada. Um, and Patrick was so willing to talk to us about sort of his early days, um, his learn to skate um, uh, journey, and the fact that um, we have him and Skate Ontario can claim him as their own is just nothing short of wonderful. So stand by. This was an interview I did um, about 10 days ago with Patrick Chan. I hope you enjoy it. Guess what, everybody? I am super excited to introduce who's here. You know what? 10-time Canadian champion, three-time Olympic medalist, three-time world champion, none other than my pal, Patrick Chan. Whoa, cue the applause. Patrick, how are you? <laughs> Good, thank you. Good, thank you. It's so great to have you here as part of our Rebound to Skating event. I know how busy you are, so thank you for taking the time. I'm going to jump right in. Okay. Tell me about Go Way Back. Um, tell me about your start in skating. Like, uh, was it can skate? Uh, mm -hmm. What do you remember about it? Oh, yeah. Um, so my actually, the very first pair of skates I wore were speed skates. And I was born oh. in Ottawa. And we went to the local oval. And um, they found, like, in the back like closet they found a pair of like tiny little speed skates so technically speed skating has has the the winner um but you know I, it was that was short-lived because i all i remember was feeling really wobbly my ankles felt like they were super weak well, um the foot comes up off the blade that's what yeah don't know about speed well, skates. and then there's no like you don't have ankle like uh, the boot doesn't cover your ankles. It goes like only under your ankles. Yeah, yeah. So um, so that was short-lived. And then um, we moved to Toronto, and that's where I decided to, to try figure skating. And actually, I wanted to play hockey, and then a hockey coach had told my mother to put me in figure skating lessons or can skate lessons actually specifically. Um, and then the rest was kind of history. And I, I was, I just remember being so competitive and I loved, I don't know what it is nowadays, but back in those days we had the stickers, like the, the skate Canada can skate, um, uh, badges and yeah. they were I thought they were like beautiful and they were like so cool and like some kids would walk in and their skating bag would have like like six of them and you're like whoa they're like they're super advanced and then um so my goal was to like I was very um uh reward <laughs> oriented and I wanted to get all the badges as fast as I could and uh I kind of cruised through all the levels and yeah you know, it's so interesting, you know, as you're talking about going way back, and I want to find out how you think can skate has influenced your career. But before that, figure skating, what captured you about skating, aside from the badges? <laughs> uh, it's so hard to, t so hard to say, but I think it's being an only child, I think I was um, I, I had maybe a little more, um, I had to be a little more creative, a little more like entertaining myself. And I think I love the aspect of um, just you being in control and I, and having the freedom to do, you have this huge piece of ice and it's like a 
blank canvas and you can literally go as fast as you want. You can throw yourself in the air, you can do some spins. Um, so I think it was just the, the freedom um, and and the freedom to be creative. And um, yeah, I just, I, I never leaned towards team sports um, initially. Um, so it was, it was just a lot of fun for me. It was just such a fun challenge. And honestly, I, I probably owe it to, to those uh, PA assistants and, um, you know, those coaches at the Canscape program because they kept it fun and really entertaining. You know, you talk about the sort of the, the joy and the freedom and the creativity. Are there ways in which you think that, you know, our Canscape program um, and, and the way that it's delivered in clubs, um, especially when you were a kid, how that has influenced your skating career? Oh, my, it's the beginning of, of it all. And uh, it's it's so easy to overlook such a crucial time in, in a skater's development or an athlete's development. And I have such a tremendous respect for, for coaches and teachers because it's it's a skill. It's not easy. And, and I now in the shoes of a coach um, from time to time, I just I have um, so much more respect for um, how you deliver the message and how you can relate it to a young athlete or a young skater. Um, it's, it's really harder than you think because even myself, who's had, had been at the very top, I, it doesn't mean that I'm going to be a good coach or a, I, I know how to explain things a, the right way for, you know, a seven year old or an eight year old, and then maybe a 12 year old. It's so different depending on the age. So, um, I just have, I just have a tremendous amount of respect for how um, how can the Canscape program was was just so much fun. I, like it kept me coming, it kept me coming back. I kept wanting to push myself to be better. Um, so I don't know. I can't remember. Obviously, I was a bit young, too young. I can't remember a specific coach or a specific lesson. Um, but I just remember like wanting to come back the next day right away and, and get the next badge and and pass the next level. Um, it just made it very satisfying and and um, thrilling really you know it's so interesting because we're talking about really a process of steps as kids are um uh, getting ready to 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 you know slap on figure skates mm -hmm. or slap on skates and get ready to participate in canscape mm -hmm. one of these days you're going to be a parent what about the canscape program do you think is valuable for parents uh, to know if they're thinking about uh, skating for their kids I mean, it's the best place to start. And I think it's really the best place to, to build those found foundational skills as okay. a skater. I think no matter where you decide to take your skills, if you want to go into hockey or you want to go into speed skating um, or figure skating, it, it doesn't matter at, at this early of a, of a time. It's, it's really just about getting the kids on the ice and, and, and feeling the glide of a blade. Um, it, it's it really doesn't have any importance and, and I think that's actually what's lacking now is is that freedom of just like letting letting the, the child choose and and give them the freedom to to do and just have fun and go through the circuits that the canscape program sets up and or learn to skate now um, I just I just think now we're thinking you know right away at five six years old that they're going to be a figure skater or they're going to be a hockey player. And it's so narrowly focused as opposed to just looking at the bigger picture. You know, they're so young. They should, they should be getting um, the, the biggest, um, how do I say the biggest um, stimulation in terms of skating, um, the biggest breadth of, of what skating is. And I don't think we need to look so specifically at like, Oh, when is he going to land his axle? Like it, it, it's not about that. It's really just about, um, feeling the, the the wind in your face and the hair, the wind going through your hair, and um, and then like feeling the glide of being on the ice, the blade and the ice, that relationship. I think it's that's that's the feeling that um, needs to they need to experience first. It's about experience. Speaking of experiences, as an Ontario skater, um, can you think of an event in Ontario that jumps to your mind as far as a cool memory? Oh my gosh. Um, the one that always sticks out to m in my mind is um, Thornhill Summer Skate, I think. Yeah. Just just remembering like that lobby, I'll never forget that lobby and like kind of like some of the conference rooms that they used as warm up areas. I'll never forget that. And like where the results were posted on the paper, like on the wall, like um, lots of, I think they had sectionals there probably a few times. So um, 
I, I spent many years in that building <laughs> um, and uh, many, many bad skates, many good skates. And yeah, so that's, that's one of the, my fondest memories as a rink and probably the cricket club obviously is like such a iconic um, place for figure skating. Um, Scarborough, like that Scarborough arena um, with the, where it had the massive Olympic size with no boards um, and yeah. with like the ice galaxy <laughs> painting on, on the wall. Like I found that that was always like, that's that I'll never forget that that environment. Here's something that I'll never forget, and it's about the cricket club. Little Patrick Chan out skating with um, maybe both parents, but I think your mom um, on a late night when I was trying to get on the ice with my um, ice nightmare boys. We waited for little Patrick Chan. It was worth the wait because we all stood around <laughs> going, how old is that kid? You were so amazing to watch even back then. Yeah. Well, thank you. you <laughs> I'd like to say I planned it. <laughs> I know you did, obviously. <laughs> Can you tell me um, a couple of your favorite titles and why? Titles? Oh my gosh. Um, the ones that stand out to me are uh, my first world championships. Yeah. My first world championship gold medal that in 2011 was just like that was um the peak of my career i felt like in terms of confidence um i was very well trained i had like i was very like dialed in in terms of like my preparation and and then the performance that followed um and then i would say my 10th national title uh, that's a huge that was a huge kind of good book end to my career um it, it meant so much to me going into the my last olympic games to to be a 10-time national champion it really it really um solidified like my my place in in history and figure skating and allowed me to go to the olympics with really very little weight on my shoulders um and and it's just a decade of of being in this sport at the very top that's pretty cool to say um and then, and obviously the Olympics, like no matter, I, they're all such wonderful experiences. And I don't necessarily like to like mention the results because it really, it, it, that's not what I remember is, is the medals. I don't, that's why they're in the bottom of my closet <laughs> because it's more about the friends and the friendships and the memories that, um, that were created and manufactured. Um, those are, will always stay with me. You know what? You have been such a proud representative of Ontario. We are so proud to claim you as our own. Um, and uh, I don't know how to say this to everybody who don't know this, but um, Patrick Chan is the most decorated male figure skater, male figure skater in Canadian history. Congratulations, Patrick. I'm going to give you the last word. Um, and how about some advice for our young skaters and our parents looking to get into figure skating through CanScape? just have fun like just come in and 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 just get on that ice and just go like there's no there's no wrongs and and uh, there's not many things in life you know at that this early stage in your life th there's not many opportunities where you just get to do what you want and and not have any kind of consequences um you really get on the ice and have fun follow the rules if you want to don't follow the rules that's the beauty of uh, can skate and learn to skate it's just you it's for you and it's not for anybody else so uh, it's not for mom or dad it's for you to have fun and understand the, the joys of of skating and being on the ice patrick chan you truly are what they say and that is chantastic thank you so much for joining me <laughs> thanks pj that's it people we will come back with some more great stuff my thanks to patrick chan for joining us is that not the cutest picture of Patrick Chan? I mean, seriously, so much fun to talk to Patrick Chan. Ten national titles. When I first saw him when he was a little gaffer, there was no way to know that he was going to win ten titles, three Olympic medals, three world championships. I mean, honestly, no, I think it's more than three medals. Hold on. Anyway, a whole bunch of medals. Patrick Chan, what a gentleman. What a wonderful ambassador for the sport. What a wonderful ambassador for Canada. So we are going to turn the corner though, speaking of wonderful, and we're going to be talking about Kahoot at our prizes again. Um, we are going to play Kahoot, which is a fantastic trivia game. All the questions that we're going to put up are questions that are going to be um, pretty, uh, let's say trivia based, Skate Ontario based, you're going to have a good time. Um, and 
when you join up, make sure you join up with the same name that you're using on Zoom so that we know, know who to contact um, as the winner. We have five prize packs to give away, all branded with Rebound to Skating. Um, they have a backpack, a toiletry bag, a mask, a water bottle, and a toque. There is our prize pack. Um, the toiletry bag looks suspiciously like a fanny pack, but maybe I'm not allowed to say fanny pack anymore. <laughs> anyway, it just means it's one of those um, uh, bags that you can take anywhere. I used to know a coach who used to bring all of her safety supplies, like extra uh, safety pins, um, extra band-aids, little things like that in a bag just like that, and used to be at the boards uh, with her skaters when they were competing and she always had everything that you could possibly ever imagine. We are gonna be starting Kahoot shortly. We just got a little bit of a technical issue, but I know that it's gonna get fixed. In the meantime, who's having a good time? I am. Who else is looking forward to getting to the rebound to skating? You guys are as well. I know that everybody's so excited to get back. Um, and we're gonna take a look at our Kahoot screen. It's very easy to do. You just have to go to, um, well, we're gonna find out in just one second. Um, and we've got a series of 10 questions and then we're going to choose the top um, uh, five winners. So go to kahoot.it or if you have the Kahoot app on your phone, you can use that as well. You've gotta put in the pin number and the pin number will put you into our game. So we're going to wait for some players to join. Um, I join, except that then I'll win for sure because I know all the answers. Um, but we want to make sure that you go to Kahoot, K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. Um, and then you're going to put in your pin number. There's Kevin. Great. Kevin, Skate C, that's that new club that we were just talking about. TBSA. I'm not sure if that's a person or a club, but it's nice to have, it must be something Skating Academy. Anyway, great to have you here. We've got two people. Who else is going to join us? Melissa Groves. Great. Glad you're joining us here. And then we've got Melanie. And remember, your names, uh, if they are as they appear on our um, uh, Zoom background, then we're great. So Rose Artel, Kay Cartwright, this is fantastic. We're looking for a few more players to get started. And remember, you're going to be playing for one of our fantastic gift packs backpack, um, toiletry brag, but I like to say sort of fanny pack, but that's okay. Um, and then a toque water bottle, wa toque water bottle, and what am I missing? Face mask, all branded. Deborah's joining us, YCS. We're going to start in about two minutes time, uh, which will put us at about 322. Alana Hermans, thank you for joining us. YCS, thank you for joining us. Pina, you did such a great job with your um, uh, presentation. It's so great. It's so great to have you here at Kahoot. Remember what we're doing here at Kahoot are the five individual prize packs. If you are a club or representing a club and you want to access one of our club prize packs, which are helmets and skates, then you're going to go to our chat. You're going to find the link uh, that is for the club contest. You, it's a it's a survey monkey link. You're going to click on the link and you're going to put in our secret word, which is rebound. That's the secret word. I'm just going to get a word, uh, um, the, the okay from backstage whenever we're ready. And then we will start with our first question. Um, so everybody here is excited. Everybody here, Violet, glad you're joining us. Um, so everybody's from, from uh, across the province. So that's fantastic. And uh, I think we're just going to give it one more minute, maybe. And then we can start. So remember, it's trivia questions. Speed counts. Speed and accuracy count. So as soon as you think you've seen the answer to the question, I would click it in. But, you know, I'm a pretty competitive Kahoot player. So um, we're going to get started. Is everybody ready? I think so. So am I. So we're going to go to question number one. I'm going to do a dramatic reading. This is for our Rebound to Skating hype event. There's the countdown clock. What is the name of the Skate Ontario OTF funded project? Back to skating, rebound to skating, right to skate, bring back skating. One more second to log in. 
Good for you, everybody. Eight people got the answer correctly. And I think another three forgot to click in. You've got to click in as quickly as you're able to. Here's our next question. Oh, Melissa Groves is in the lead. She probably got it in quickly. How many Ontario champion sneak peeks did we see? Three, seven, five, or nine? You have five seconds left. Four. Log in quickly, even if you're just guessing. Correct answer was five. Four people said three. One person said seven. Six people said five. So let's take a look at our leaderboard. Melissa Grove still in the lead, 1484. K Cartwright really tight on um, uh, closing in, as was well Pina Gilmore. Okay, everybody. I think we're going to go to question number three. True or false? Skate Ontario ran 11 webinar skating, 11 rebound skating webinar series. True or false? About one more second. 10 people logged in. True. 10 of you, fantastic. Good job. Let's take a look at our leaderboard. Melissa, you're still in the lead. Pina, you're catching up and you're on fire. That's what that little logo means. Who's ready for our next question? Question number four. What is the name of the Skate Ontario goat? Vincent Van G-O-A-T, uh, Vincent the goat, Vinnie Gruff, or that G-O-A-T? Eight of you said Vincent the G-O-A-T, which is greatest of all time. Correct answers. And let's see what the leaderboard looks like now. Melissa. You are doing great. Still in the lead. 31-33, Peter Gilmore with 2,795 points. Followed very closely. 14 points behind with Kay Cartwright and Kevin Skate from this Kevin from Skate C Skate Club. You're moving up. So is Rose. Okay, time for our next question. What two items are we giving away to five lucky clubs or skating schools during this event? Skates and guards, skates and helmets. Helmets and guards, pylons and ringette sticks. All good possible prizes. Skates and helmets, perfect. Helmets and guards, also a good answer, but not quite correct. On the leaderboard, Melissa Gross is still in advance. Remember, in the lead rather. Remember, we are looking for our top five finishers. Okay. Three players just hit the answer streak of three answers, which is fantastic. Okay. Name of Skate Canada's flagship Learn to Skate program. Patrick and I talked about it a lot. Star Skate, Internet Hockey, Learn to Skate, Can Skate. What is our answer? Three seconds to go. Everybody said Can Skate, with one exception, who said Learn to Skate, but it is a Learn to Skate program, so I understand the confusion. Let's take a look at our leaderboard. Melissa, on fire. So you have a streak with six correct answers in a row. That's fantastic. Uh, Peter Gilmore sitting in second place, Kay Cartwright in third, Rose Artell in fourth, and Kevin in fifth place. Top five, um, top five people will win a, um, a prize pack. Question number seven. What is the name of Skate Ontario's Can Skate Recognition Program? Can Skate Excellence, Quality Can Skate, Can Skate Supreme, or Can Skate Honors? One more second to log in. Can skate excellence. All of you got that question right. Congratulations. How does that change the leaderboard? Melissa, you established an early lead, and there you are still in the lead, followed by Pina Gilmore, Kay Cartwright, Rose Artell, and Kevin. Okay, we've got two more questions to go, I think. Uh, three, eight, nine, and ten. Uh, let's see what happens. Who was our special guest star during this rebound to skating? Paul Poirier, Nan Nguyen, Brian Orser, or Patrick Chan? Bit of a trick question there. Patrick Chan. But if you remember, we also saw Paul Poirier in the sneak peek. So uh, congratulations to everybody with the correct answer of Patrick Chan. Um, Melissa. Melissa Grove still in the lead. Kay Cartwright has come up into second place. Pina Gilmore in third. Rose Artell in fourth. And Kevin in fifth. Two more questions to go. Here comes question number nine. What do we send out to club skating schools as part of our Rebound to Skating initiative? Rebound to Skating Toolbox. Rebound to Skating Toolkit. Rebound to Skating Duffel Bag. 
rebound to skating backpack. Rebound to skating toolkit. That was a bit of a tricky one. My language was very close. Okay, Melissa, you have the highest number of answers with a streak of nine correct answers, which basically means all of them so far. Uh, Pina is in second place. Kevin, you've made the leap into third place. Congratulations. Kate Cartwright, you are sitting in fourth and we have a new face on the leaderboard. Melanie, you are sitting in fifth place. Let's go to our final question. This is winner take all. Well, not really, but this can change things. Where are the 2022 Canadian National Championships scheduled to be held? Toronto, Ontario, London, Ontario, Ottawa, Ontario, Hamilton, Ontario. I know we mentioned it once. You got two more seconds to answer. Ottawa, Ontario is correct. So let's take a look at our podium. Remember, top five finishers. Kevin, you are sitting in third. And in second, Pina Gilmore. And in first, Melissa Groves. Congratulations to everybody who played. Our runners up, Kay Cartwright and Rose Artell in fourth and fifth place. You will each win a fabulous prize pack. Um, we need you to send your email addresses in the chat, um, or you can send them to communications at skateontario.org, and we will send those prize packs out to you. And once again, backpack, uh, toiletry bag, mask, water bottle, and toque, all branded. So congratulations on playing uh, Kahoot and doing so well. So we need email ad addresses from Melissa, Kevin, and Rose. Um, you can either put them in the chat um, or you can send them in. Great, you've put them in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for playing. Um, so in closing, this uh, brings our session to an end. And I want to thank the Ontario Trillium Foundation and their partners for making this session possible. I, I also want to remind everybody that you go to our website, skateontario.org. You look for our RTS or Rebound to Skating pages where you'll be able to find resources, uh, <clears throat> Those 11, those 11 webinars that we talked about in replay and all kinds of information. You have been a wonderful audience. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for watching. I'm PJ Kwong. Bye for now.